Hey everyone, welcome into Tech Rewind. I am David Nuno in my home studio. Got Eric Casares in the house. Eric, what was your favorite part of the show? It was definitely Broniger coming in, talking about recruiting country, and then of course, getting ready for Aggie baseball, kicking off their season, and I believe 16 days here in uh, Bluebell Park. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, that, that was good. Uh, it wasn't as good as what the headliner is. Nick, you want to tell them what the headliner was? Yeah, it was uh, definitely Tommy Moffat coming in here, and I'm I'm... I am upset for you, David, because I'm sure you would probably have him parked in the corner right now, still talking to him about, uh, you know, this, that, or the other in between segments. So, um, yeah, Tommy Moffat for sure. Zero reps in reserve, one rep, you know, all that. We would break it all down. Tommy Moffat was phenomenal. We'll give you a little snippet of that. Chris Gordy from the Senior Bowl gave us an update on all the Aggies out there. Tom Schuberth getting us ready for Aggie basketball. And as Erica Sarr said, the return of the Broninger, that and more here on Tex Ags Rewind. You strike me as old school slash new school, where yes. you do bring in the science um, that a lot of the old fitness guys did not get into, but you also keep that mindset of let's grind, let's go. Yes. That is correct. Um, Take me through that that mindset. Yeah. So um, long ago, you know, 34, 35 years ago when I started, everything was done on experience and intuition uh, and, and knowledge of what was available. There was no internet then. So uh, you either got it in firsthand conversations or you had to send a check or a money order somewhere and buy a book. Uh, I remember buying a book from Budapest, Hungary at one time, and I sent a check over with, you know, filled out a little order form, and it took a month and a half to get the book back. But today, that data that we get is uh, immediately available as soon as the workout is complete. Yesterday, we were outside running, and uh, uh, our, one of our uh, anal data analytics, people had a tv screen and i could see what was going on in real time about the distances and velocities that we were hitting while we were doing our workout so every time a texas a&m aggie player comes to the weight room or goes outside to us to run or practice we measure it uh, so i tell them every time you wiggle we collect that data and then we analyze it so um, you know, we finish every day with an hour-long staff meeting where we go over all the analytics immediately following the workout. So now the things that we do are evidence-based, they're data-driven, and then we use our experience and our intuition to make those hard decisions. But it takes all of the guesswork out of it. Like I know exactly how – because – I have two former Duke strength coaches on my staff, one who worked for me at LSU, and then Brandon Stiegel, who came with Coach Elko with us. So those guys know the distances, velocities, accelerations, and decelerations that Coach Elko is going to do in his very first football practice. Let's uh, talk to Nia Smith. I saw a couple of videos pop up of him yesterday, and uh, he just looks like that explosive player that he always has been. Uh, what are you hearing when it comes to Anias? Yeah, it's funny. Um, it, he had a couple drops, so you know it, it wasn't the best of day for him when he when he catches the ball. Yeah, it's it's the explosiveness, and it's funny because I asked him. I said, you know, you're a guy who started as a running back, converted to receiver. You've been one of the best receivers, you know, when healthy in in the SEC, and, and you know. I think size doesn't matter anymore. I mean, you look at Tank Dell last year coming out of University of Houston. Like, it used to be you want a receiver, you want somebody who's 6'3", 6'4", can stretch the field. But now it's like it's all about moving the chains in the NFL, and, and you just want possession guys. You want guys who can play the slot, who who can guarantee you to move the chains. And I think there was definitely a role for Anaya Smith. But I asked him, I said, what are you hearing from some of the coaches and scouts you've talked to about You know, what position would be best for you? He said, honestly, they all ask me that. He said, they've been asking me, where do you see yourself? Like where, because he's such a hybrid, he's such a, a mismatch that I think NFL teams are excited to get their hands on him and see how they can use him. So, you know, he, he admitted to me, he said, like, you know, one of the best of day, days for me, but he said, the best thing is you get to go out there, you know, today, tomorrow, Friday. So uh, plenty of time to still go out there and make a name for himself. And I will remind people, Tank Dell had a rough first day when I was out here uh, last year at the time. So, um, but excited to see an I Smith, man. I, I do think he, there is a role for him. And I think, uh, you know, whatever NFL team he ends up on, he's going to have a big impact.
Talking to Chris Gordy here on Texas Radio. Uh, Chris, McKinley Jackson's the name about a year ago. Senior Bowl folks were tweeting about him, right? They were talking about how this is a guy. Um, how did last season affect him? And is he still one of those hot names that you hear scouts talking about? Yeah, he had a couple moments yesterday where he was pushing guys around. I don't know if you saw there was one video clip where he literally threw a guy to the ground and it was um it was awesome to see. So So tell me why. Why do I not need to panic? Because I'm close to panicking, Tom. I'm very close to panicking. Well, based on what we've seen the last two, three years with AM, I, I never count them out. And I think that's why we're a dangerous team. But at the same time, never count us in. I mean, uh, it's hard to predict uh, the outcome of ball games when Texas A&M plays just because of maybe our inconsistency and then I think our inability to shoot the ball consistently uh, throughout this season has been our biggest, uh, you know, negative. Yeah, it is the biggest negative. But I'll tell you what, Tom, like you're taking on a Florida team this week and they're going to be taking on this Florida team who seems to be rising, right? Uh, you you have to win the games, especially at home against the teams. Uh, you, you it's great to beat Kentucky at home. That's phenomenal. They need more of that. It's great to go on the road and beat LSU. But you got to win the games at home that are in front of you, especially the winnable games. And I find the a Florida game it should be winnable if you're a, a championship level team or a, excuse me a tournament level team. Sure, uh, especially when you only play a team once, David. You know, like we lost to Ole Miss. Uh, last week. And, you know, we've got a return game there at the end of the year. So you can make up for that when you're playing good ball clubs in a, in a power five conference, if you can split with good teams, I think you feel pretty good unless you're that elite, you know, maybe one or two teams in the country where you expect to, you know, win every night out. So this is really a must game in that we don't have a chance to go down to Florida and uh, make up for it. Like we did in the LSU loss. So I, I see it's going to be a great game. You know, Florida's looking at it. They're still not considered to be a tournament team by many people's account. So they feel like if they can get a road win against a good A&M team, that's going to help their resume. So I think it's going to be a battle. The other thing about Florida, they're so similar to us in some ways. Uh, I looked up the stats today. I know we're the number one offensive rebounding team in the country, and Florida's right behind us about two less as the second team. And then Florida's the number one rebounding team in the country, and we're number two. So it should be a great battle. I even read one of your comps online uh, on TexAgs.com for Dejan Pedway that kind of got me intrigued. Uh, let, let's start off there if we can. Yeah, so Dejan's a kid that obviously the A&M staff has known about for a long time and has been he's a kid that's been very familiar with A&M for a long time because of Damian Sanford, his older brother, being recruited. Uh, you know, started getting recruited even when Mike Elko was here toward the tail end of that. Uh, but in earnest, got recruited by the previous staff. But Dejan has been coming on trips here, uh, coming to camps at Texas A&M since Mike Elko was on staff as a defensive coordinator, and he was a freshman in high school. And uh, the Aggies were one of his first offers. Uh, the Aggies had done a great job of, through the transition, continuing their communication. And I think I don't think I know that Dejan was a kid that Mike Elko, Ish Aristi, Jordan Peterson put a very high priority on almost immediately when they started looking at the 2025 recruiting cycle. Now, what I wrote and what I, what I said in our in-home visit after his commitment and then what I wrote yesterday on my column on the site was that, look, just you had all these things going for you with Dejan, right? So it's not just Damian Sanford, his brother, being on the roster. You also signed a former teammate of his in DJ Hicks. You also had the proximity factor from Katy Pato High School to Texas A&M's campus is like right at an hour. Um, so it's very drivable. This kid's been coming up to your campus. Uh, I, I would bet that Dejan Petaway has made 10 to 15 trips to Texas A&M over the last two or three years of his life. Uh, seen multiple football games, been to junior days, been to camps. Uh, he's, he's about seen and done it all. What that does to me is amplify – the pressure to get him, to land him whenever Georgia, Oklahoma, LSU, all these schools that are big-time powers, Ohio State, are recruiting him heavily, you need to win that one. It doesn't mean that it's easier. It just means that you really need to do it with all the stuff you've got going for you. All right, that's going to do it. Fast man, tell the people what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, share, rate it. Check us our YouTube channel out. Everything. Do it. All Tech that Radio, and much, baby. much more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.